This is how to navigate the Cisco Optics interoperability matrix. This is a new tool available online now that tells you which Cisco optics are optically interoperable with other Cisco optics or with other optical transceivers that adhere to standardized optical specifications. I'm Pat Chow. I'm a product manager in Cisco Optics. My colleague, Peter Wong, who recently led the development of this new tool, is going to give me a tour. Hey, Peter. Hey, Pat. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you, too. So what have we got today? Well, we've got the Optics Optics Interoperability Matrix. Your new tool, right? That's right. That's right. Very nice. All right. Let's see the tour. Show us what okay. you got. Well, just like the compatibility matrix, the interoperability matrix also has a search window right here. And as you begin to type, there's a suggestions box that come right underneath the search, win uh, search window. And it provides suggestions for form factor, the, uh, the product ID, as well as the uh, product family. And it looks just like the search tool that was used in the compatibility matrix. That's right. That's right. Hey, can we try the uh, QSP 100 and the transceiver sure. product family? Sure. So you point the arrow to the QSP 100 in the suggestions box. You click on that. And then the tool will bring up all the results for QSP 100. And it's a pretty long list because there's uh, yeah. quite a few of these, right? That's right. That's right. You can see me scrolling down that it is a long list. So that's why we have the uh, filters. So let's say, for instance, we check the 100 meter reach filter. Mm -hmm. And now you find your search and you have three results, right? Much more readable. That's right. That's right. Now notice that you have two rows for 100 gig SR4. OK. Now what, what is the, that left-hand column, first of all? Ah, where the SR4 right. appears. Right. So the the SR4, this is the transceiver of of interest in the first column. It gives you some transceiver information as well. In the second column, it shows the transceiver pairing as well as the standard. And the standard uh, is for third-party optics that conforms the to the standard, and they will also work SR4. Okay, so let me make sure I get this straight. So the transceiver on the left-hand column interoperates with multiple transceivers in the next column. It could be a transceiver with that Cisco product ID, or it could be any transceiver, even a non-Cisco third-party transceiver that adheres to that standard specification like this IEEE 25G base SR. That's right. That's right. Cool. And then what's this interop reach column? Right. And this shows you the uh, the the reach between the transceivers. And then finally, the last column is whether you need the um, breakout cable for it to work with the transceiver. So in the first row, you can see that the SR4 is breakout capable, mm -hmm. okay? And it will work in breakout mode, which requires a breakout cable or, or patch cord. And okay. you can see that by the data rate. So the it's a 100 gig data rate for the, for the first transceiver, but its pairings are at 25 gig. Okay. Now I interrupted you when you were saying that there are actually two rows of SR4. What's the difference between these two rows? Right. In the second row, it just works in direct mode. So it's so at direct mode, you're at 100 gig to 100 gig, and you don't need a uh, patch out cable or patch cord. Okay. So that second row, it's interoperating with these three different 100 gig transceivers, or in the case of the IEEE 100G base SR4, it's the IEEE standard. Again, That's right any third party or non-Cisco optic that adheres to that standard can talk to the Cisco 100 gig SR4. Is that what that means? That's right. That's right. Great. Great. And then there's one more at the bottom, the 100 gig 
the 40 hundred gig buy die right and in in this case there is no uh, it is not breakout capable so it's just you know one row and these are the transceiver pairings for the 100 gig buy die very nice now one thing i do want to point out is that there is a uh for for each there are more than four distances mm -hmm. and by clicking on the expansion for instance and clicking on 40 kilometers the tool will bring up not just the 100 meters but also the er4l that will reach 40 kilometers okay so you've added a checkbox in the filter and now it it pulls up an additional optic the er4 light that's right that's right and you can also see that the pairing transceivers are different form factors so this is a qs QSFP 28 form factor working with a CFP or a CPAC form factor. Okay, so because it's optical interoperability, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same form factor at both ends. That's right, that's right. Now look at, I want to draw your attention to the reach as well. Mm -hmm. And it tells you that even though it's specified for 40 kilometers here for L, uh, depending on whether you work with FEC or no FEC, it does affect the reach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is a really useful table to have because, I mean, who can remember those numbers off the top That's of the right. head? That's right. That's right. Great. And then once you're happy with all the results, you can export that to an Excel, PDF, or CSV format. Very cool. Again, just like the compatibility matrix. Right, right. And if you click here, you get the user manual. And then to your right, that's our banner, which shows featured blogs and products. Great. All right. Well, thanks, Peter. This looks like a really useful tool to add to your toolbox. Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. And Pat, it was good talking to you. Yeah, you too. Thanks again for the tour.